Welcome to Amplify, the podcast from the Association for Accounting Marketing. I'm Alice Gray Harrison. Today we have the privilege of speaking with veteran of the accounting industry, though not in a marketing role. John Sensiba, managing partner with Sensiba San Filippo, was featured as the keynote speaker at the AIM Emerge Conference. And today we will take a deeper dive into some of John's insights of what it takes to make an exceptional client experience. All right, let's kick it off with the first tough question. Great, thanks. Why has the client experience just now become such a hot topic in the accounting industry? Or has it just now become a hot topic? I think it's certainly a hotter topic. It's always been of concern to to folks, but nowhere near as deep as it is now. I think that with the transparency of the internet, um, and Yelp and other rating services, you can't hide. And our work has gone from transactional compliance work, typical tax returns and financial statements, to high level, higher level consulting, and clients expect more. They look at CPA firms, they understand now that there's a difference. They used to think, okay, it says CPA, just give me the cheapest one because they're all the same. And they realize that they're not all the same. Right. They share information. Uh, if you do a bad job or you... you um, have, give somebody a bad client experience, it's not just one person who knows about it now. It's the entire marketplace. So you either pay attention to client experience or you'll be in big trouble <laughs> from, a, from a marketing and a sales and a, and a retention uh, uh, perspective when it comes to clients. So I think increased uh, mobility and information has made it a um, higher priority for, pe- for people. Yeah, uh, and, and not just for us, for, I mean, every single profession in the world. That's right. Every retailer, every yep. professional service provider, everybody. Yep. So is it service or the team members providing the service that actually make the difference? It's always people. Mm-hmm. It's always people. I had a, uh, the worst professor, I won't use his name, um, in <laughs> my, under, my undergraduate studies. Uh, and I think he was teaching cost accounting, so it probably wasn't his fault. It's just a horrible topic. Um, and one thing that he said that I remembered is, uh, you know, in real estate, they always say it's location, location, location. He said, what you should know in public accounting is it's always people. People, people, people. The people you serve, the people you work with, the people you work for. If you're not good with people, it doesn't matter how much you know or how good of a technician you are, uh, you will not be successful. So when it comes to service, it's all about the people and how they deliver it and showing clients that they care, being proactive, not being a mechanic or a technician, but being somebody who actually cares about the client themselves. So it's always the people. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that one. Um, most of the listeners of Amplify, our podcast, are marketers and business developers at accounting firms. And so their job is to bring business into the firms. But given our current talent crisis and having the appropriate team seems critical to the quality of client, client experiences. So um, you and I caught up a little bit on this and you yeah. shared a little bit in your presentation. What, are, what, are, what can marketers do? If the firm doesn't have capacity to do the work, that or they're not, they don't have the people to do the work. So it's a golden age for marketers. This is an incredible opportunity to upgrade the client base. So there may not be capacity for more of the C clients that every firm has. We all we all try and make sure it's only A's and B's, but there's always capacity. So it's a great opportunity to go out and get the absolute best clients and upgrade the client base. You're only going to have so many hours that you have because it's so hard to recruit people right now. So make sure that you're not wasting any of those hours on clients that would be better served by another provider. It's not fair to keep clients that, that you don't value because no matter how, and our profession is filled with wonderful people. So nobody would intentionally disserve a client, but you're going to pay attention, at least you should be paying attention to the clients that value you most and appreciate your work. And those that don't, maybe they belong someplace else. So. Marketers need to help their firms take a really hard line about who's in the stable right now and excuse those that don't belong so you can go get the better clients. So this is a golden opportunity, I think, for firms to do that and for marketers to leave that. That is, that I hadn't thought about it in that way. That's great. So are there differences in what an exceptional client experience looks like from state to state or region to region? Or is it just, you know, across the country, this is an exceptional client experience? There are probably slight differences based on region. 
Uh, but for the most part, we as a profession need to do a better job of reducing the friction between us and our clients. Uh, it used to be that you had to go to the bank and stand in line on a Friday and deposit your paycheck and you know take an hour out of your day to put your, you know, like when people used to get paid on Fridays. <laughs> a lot of people listening to this are going, what's what? he talking about? What's he talking about? Wait, a, a real check? A check, a live check. <laughs> um, so now, you know, everything's a direct deposit, or at least most things are, but occasionally you get a live check from somebody for something, whether it's for your aunt for Christmas for $25 or who knows. Yes. And you don't go to the bank. You take a picture of it on your phone. Right. And you, t- you spend, if you spend 30 seconds on it, it's because you got distracted by Facebook halfway through your deposit. I mean, <laughs> it takes no time at all. The CPA profession has not done that. We haven't developed the mobile platforms, secure mobile platforms, to interact with our clients. So the client experience is, I think, evenly across the country and across the world, evenly not what it could be. I don't want to be negative about it, but we've got so much more we can do to reduce the friction between us and our clients and create that mobile, uh, on-demand, easy experience that other industries have already done. Yeah, and I would imagine just as my accent's a little bit slower here in the South, things probably are. The client experience in the South, they don't they expect things to be maybe a little bit slower than they do in New York or in on the West Coast. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's absolutely maybe. true. And just like it, with individuals, you have to learn their communication style. Yes. You know, my communication style is ask me a question, I'll give you an answer, right? And some people say, well, I'd rather hear what you did this morning. Right? I want to hear a little bit about your weekend. I want to hear about you. Yes. And I want to yes. have a connection. You know, yes or no will get me where I need to be, but that's not what I'm looking for in my communication. And other people um, just want the yes or no. They yes. look at you as you tell them extraneous information. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Give me my answer. <laughs> You're like, wasting my time. I'm, 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 I might hurt you. Stop. <laughs> you know? um, so you have to understand yeah. you know, there are regional differences that you need to understand, but also individual differences because everybody is unique. Yeah, I, I, that's a great point. Um, okay, one last question for you. Um, with m and still common within the industry, I mean, gosh, I feel like it's even more common right Both now sides, than ever. Yeah. How do merging firms get in sync around the quality of the client experience? And this is a great question because, they, you know, I work for DHG. We've had tons of m and over the years, and it's interesting how fundamentally – some of the firms that have merged in with us have a different view. Some right. better, some not as good. Right. Well, I'll give you my best thinking. I'm not an M&A expert by any stretch of the imagination, although we've done a little bit of that. And I can tell you from my mistakes uh, what I think is the, the right way to approach that. Negotiate it. Agree with it up, up front and make the switch from whatever method. You, the, the, usually the acquiring firm is going to be the one that dictates just make it clear to the firm that you're acquiring. Everybody in the firm, including those two or three partners who don't think anything's ever going to change and will drag their feet, that it's not only is it changing, it's changing immediately. Making a slow change or saying, you know, you guys do great things and we do great things. We converge them together. We'll slowly develop into even, you know, a hybrid, better client experience. No. Go to one. If you can improve it, improve it like you always do. Every chance you get, you improve the client experience. But don't confuse your people, don't confuse the marketplace, make it very clear before you do a transaction, this is the way it's gonna be. And it's gonna be that way from noon, the day that we merge, for eternity. And we'll improve it as we can, but we are not doing anything other than the firm process. So that's that's my current thinking. I'm sure yeah. smarter people will give you better answers, but that's mine. I don't know. That one was pretty good. Okay, I'm going off script. With, I said that was the last question, but <laughs> we, we when we were catching up a few minutes before we started recording, you mentioned that your firm has three expectations of their people. And I thought it was so brilliant. Um, would you mind sharing those three expectations? Because I feel like it's so relevant to the world that we're living in right now. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the question. And, um, you know, we're... We're happy to be able to bring clarity to our people, uh, which is not based on geography or where you sit. And this has been our, our motto for a long period of time, but it's more relevant since the pandemic. And we ask people to do three things. We ask them to communicate, we ask them to meet their commitments, and we ask them to be kind. And those first two things, well, the, fir- the third thing is, is everything. If you can't do number three, then number one and two really don't matter. Um, but communication, not everybody's great at it. So you really do need to communicate. And meeting your commitments, that's the hallmark of a professional. So if I say I'm going to do something, either I do it or I renegotiate the commitment or I tell you that that was relevant when we talked about it, it's no longer relevant. I just want you to know I'm not doing it so that people don't spend time chasing 
people. The client experience is horrible when you don't meet your commitments. Internal experiences are horrible. So if you communicate, meet your commitments and you're kind, uh, as I said earlier, you can, and you can get really great Wi-Fi on Mars, do your job, <laughs> do your job there. Just, just do those three things. And, and, and I, it may sound like I don't care if I see the people that I work with. That's not true. I love seeing the people I work with. Last Friday we had a golf tournament, a uh, very nine-hole chip and putt thing. We had people from all over the country. There was a hundred-some people at this golf tournament. I had the best time. I love seeing the people I work with, but I don't have to see them to know that they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're professionals. We trust them. They do those those three things. Yes. They do them well, and uh, it makes for a pretty happy firm. That's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. I just thought it was so succinct and a great, great way that we all can strive towards every single day. Um, and thank you all for joining us for another episode of Amplify, the podcast from the Association for Accounting Marketing. If you liked today's episode, we appreciate you leaving a good rating and sharing with your colleagues and friends. We hope you will listen in for another episode of Amplify. We've got some great ideas for you. It's time.